So anyway, uh, anything new and exciting with, with what's going on with, uh, your, you know, the learners at school and AI, are they, are they using it or is it as big a deal as we thought it might be or not be? You know, so right now I feel like it's not as big of a deal, but I am in the middle of having conversations with my students about ethical communication. That's usually how I start off my, uh, classes anyway. And it's just going to naturally segue into what sort of temptations will we have and what are our sort of um, lines that we're not willing to cross? Because I want, I want them to naturally come to that too. I don't want to tell them what they can and cannot do. So I feel like conversations right now are, are definitely about ethical consumption of you know, media, uh, and also our own ethical concerns over creation of our own products, whatever they might be. Because I mean, right now, I'm kind of being vague, but I I teach ninth grade public speaking and college writing and video productions. And so each of them have we have their own way of talking about it, but we're all going to eventually be using AI in some way. Yeah, as well, our conversation um, has been uh, focused on um, the ed TPA and the master's program when teachers have to fill out their portfolio. And are they going to just ask specific questions and get that uh, AI to answer those, you know, that they will, so we'll see. Again, it's very ethical. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be your analysis and reflection of your practice. So if you decide that you're going to get AI help because maybe you're not a great writer, well, maybe that's okay, but how much of that is the human back in the loop as we talked in the last episode? So it's interesting. Mm-hmm. And that does go to what we're going to talk about today in today's show. So should we get started with the show? Let's do it. Okay. All right. We'll get going here. Recording in progress. So welcome to Educational AI, where we are unleashing the power of AI and education for good. And we're making sure the human is in the loop. Right, Casey? Yes, so that's that's what we're proponents for, I guess, is making sure that we reserve um, the cool factor and yet we still also say, hey, what are we learning? What are we trying to improve upon and um, and still be ourselves and not the machine taking over as some people fear. So, right. so yeah, it- I guess that's what we're talking about. I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, too, that, um, you know, we before the show started, we're talking a bit about kind of starting with those ethical, you know, where is the line of how much is the human in the loop and how much is AI in it? And, uh, you know, how how ethical is it if it starts generating too much and not the human generating enough? Right. Mm -hmm. So in my Mm -hmm. context, I work with uh, uh, master learners in getting their um, teaching certificates and their their student teaching and they're completing the ed tpa and um, you know it might be uh, ai might be helpful with the writing process but it's got to be the analysis of the practice and in your setting you've got learners you want to mention how how they're ethically facing those issues yeah so i mean think of my college writing students this is in the introductory writing they oftentimes in my experience, they don't trust themselves in their own writing, right? They're feeling a little bit like maybe uh, somebody else has already said it. Someone else has already said it better than them. And it's just a lot of um, doubt. And so it's very easy. I feel like those students to go to uh, an AI tool and be like, it's here. It's perfect. I can put in this prompt. It gets it. It it could do a way better job than I ever could. And so, a lot of what I need to do with them right away in this beginning stage of like introducing AI, but also introducing writing as a process, is to have them trust themselves. You know, to trust that they have great judgment, that they have the ability to come up with ideas and to expand upon an idea just on their own, just fine. But if we want to expedite a process, a part of that process, you know, brainstorming is one of those things. And I think some students get held up in that stage. And so for me right now, that's, that's me kind of working towards students understanding the ethical dilemmas faced with like, 
doing their own work and getting help and trying to find that line, but also trusting themselves. Because I think most plagiarism cases, most um, concerns that people have over AI, it's a lot of, um, it's lack of self-trust, right? A lot, a lot of people um, just don't trust their own capabilities and they feel like that machine or that service can do it better. And so uh, I think our jobs as educators right now in, in this time is to really build them up and to help them see their skills. And I think AI can even do that for us. Like, I think what we can do is have them play in chat GPT or in Bard or somewhere and say, all right, I want you to use your critical thinking skills and get that service to work for you. And, and the ways that you have to do this is like, you know, asking the right questions. So I don't know. What do you, what do you think about that concept of um, using the AI to also teach not to use the AI, AI or to, to be too reliant yeah. on it? And I think the more that, that we play and experience, and we start seeing that unless we ask the right kinds of prompts, um, that we're not going to get the kind of answers that we want. And then also, uh, you know, like ethically, do we really want to use those type of answers if they really don't come from us, just like you were saying earlier? Um, and, and just trusting themselves. I think so many times, why do people lie or cheat or not tell the truth? Because they're just too afraid that they're not good enough or, um, they don't have the, they just, there's, they're just embarrassed. They don't have the answer. So they'll go to, like you said, the machine quickly and try to get that mm -hmm. answer. But over time that if you don't use it for good, it's going to make you look bad. Right. And right. Uh, I'll tell you what, at least in my situation, never would you want to turn an EdTPA portfolio folio in and it was all basically done by AI. I mean, just think of that. How ethically are you going to go to the standards in the state of Minnesota or any state you're at? And that would be a definite issue because you're not being an ethical educator doing that, right? Right. Or a learner that you have, you know, plagiarism, right? But again, it's like at, like showing them how to play showing them how to really ask good questions, how to come up with the really strong prompts. And that just takes time and it takes trust and it takes play and it takes us as educators. And that's what we're talking to educators. You need to be the leaders to show them or at least be there walking with them as they're exploring and saying, oh, well, can, look at this log of prompts. When did the questions get better? Simply ask Bard and say like, or Chad or any of them being and say, so how do you write a great prompt or a question so that I get the best answers and then follow that. So, you know, that right. I mean, helpful. I think you brought up a really great point there. Sorry, I was excited to say asking them, asking the service, what do you need from me? What information do I need to provide for you for me to get this end result? for me to get to X, Y, Z, whatever it might be. Um, you know, those are the sort of things that I think you're right, teachers and uh, those leaders in the room and in that space can demonstrate and to say, this this is like, go back and show your chat logs and say, you know, this got me a quick answer, but look at what this prompt got me, you know? And I wasn't, I, I think that we need to also, um, place more value on not getting the fastest answer. Absolutely. You know, we, we that reward process. that all, all day long in our classrooms, like hands up, whoever has their hands up first, whoever gets here first, whoever, does, and it's all about speed. And that's only going to reinforce the concept that we want just a product. We want just an answer and never valuing a process of getting there. So you know, it starts small, maybe it's even outside of the use of AI in your classroom or in that setting where you're asking for response from your learners. Take a beat before you allow that. I mean, today I just had a conversation with a couple of students. I said, you know what, it's okay. And this comes across a little condescending, but I was like, it's okay if we let things process in our brain before we say them. Now, mind you, I talk to ninth graders sometimes. And so I'm, I'm really just telling them to use a filter. But I think like that concept is working in all areas where we say, you know what? I don't want your first answer. I want your best answer. So let's just take a minute, think about it. And then 
once you've figured it out, once you're like, this is it, think about it again. Yeah. And when they and can then, see those yeah. logs appear and they can see their question and then they can look right away at the response, go, well, that's not what I wanted. And then they rephrase it again. That is some real critical thinking. If you don't ask a good question, you're not going to get a good answer. I mean, it's the, yep. the well-crafted question, um, you know, uh, yeah. So again, AI will tell you if you're really wondering, just just ask them what's the best way to ask a prompt or question and they'll tell you and follow those guidelines. Uh, and, and again, just look at the logs and play and you'll see that it's exciting to get to the point mm -hmm. where you've really asked an awesome question and now you're really getting the results that you want to incorporate it into whatever you're working on. So that, that to right. me is a pretty good, good way of using it. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I agree and with they, you. And, and they all and work the same, I, you know, the prompts all, you know, the whole process works the same. It's all log. You're going to have all those responses so that you don't have to talk about any of the different services that are out there because they all work on the same premise. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, if you're using open AI, you're using open AI, right? It's going to be the same, but I think, um, What's really amazing about this is really showing the students as well on top of just like looking at their logs and looking at how they process, you know, their questions and building on that. You can say, how are you going to use that information now to create something of your own? Let's break it down and show me like what was the most enlightening for you. Go back to that chat and say, where's that moment where you you had the light bulb? you know, turn on or whatever. And I think that could be a fun activity to do in a classroom too, is to like go back and review. And, and that's part of your process of like, where'd you get your aha moment? Where was something that really alarmed you? Or you know? <laughs> No, but I was just thinking too, I was just thinking about um, uh, using it. When you were saying all that, think about math. And, and again, you don't always, you know, there's not enough of us to go around in the classroom. But all of a sudden you're working with the AI and you see in the prompt, like, oh, this is where my process messed up. Like it will show you the log. It'll show you the, 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 the math problem. And all of a sudden it's not like wrong or right answer. It's like you followed or your in step was incorrect or this is the step. And it helps you process that and take your time and not feel embarrassed. You're doing it in front of all these people at a chalkboard anymore, you know, mm -hmm. or on a whiteboard mm -hmm. or somewhere. So it is a, it, it doesn't always just have to be, um, you know, uh, it, it can be really personalized is what I'm saying in a classroom yeah. or um, yourself as an educator, anybody. It's just, a, again, we're back to that is a very personalized process and you have to learn how to really ask those great prompts and it's a really higher level thinking. And that's what we want our learners to have is that opportunity for personalization, for growth, for using the AI for good and not for other purposes, right? So with that, we're just yeah. about out of, in it, out of time here. Do you have any uh, closing remarks about asking the prompt or the human in the loop? No, I think, I think we've kind of, you know, touched on the key points of what it means to have a human in the loop when you're doing this process and involving yourself. And, and to comment on like what you just said and it make it full circle, that, that, moment where a student can go back and self-evaluate and check their process in that chat log and like you said you don't have to go up to the chalkboard you know the whiteboard or whatever and embarrass yourself and and that's learning right that's not learning instead confidence has been built in their understanding of that process they feel so much better about their knowledge now that they will get up in front of the room and show everybody that's the idea, I guess. They Hopefully. had some validation and in a personalized way without, and then again, I don't know if the teachers got time to help validate and personalize everything, but in, this is just right. an opportunity that you could do it that way. So thank you. And again, we're just digging in and unleashing the power of educational AI.